And so, hi everyone, I'm Andy. Um, we're basically, we're, we're both the directors of the of the company. Um, we, previous to this, um, we both had full time obviously jobs in a, in a variety of different fields. Um, I was the director of sport at Tossing College, so I ran a department of about 35 people, um, and oversaw the development of sport in colleges across the region as well, um, as well as answering to the nationally, so trying to drive national educational policy change. Um, within that, uh, there was a, a lot of business decisions to make. Um, I also ran a number of different kind of ventures alongside it for Chelsea Football Club and Southampton Football Club and that kind of stuff as well. So, um, yeah, so that's me. Yeah, and I'm Chris, I'm the other director, and I, I came from a different angle from Andy. He was more on the educational side, I came from more of a business side, uh, the sports coaching company for the last 15 years. Um, admittedly, it wasn't in running, but it has been in sport, so it's really given me a flavour of, of what we were, were trying to set up this year. So in a, in a nutshell, we, <coughs> we spent our lives trying to inspire people to be active um, and to create products whether they were inside educational establishments like this one, or whether they were outside, like Chris's commercial kind of ventures and uh, all over the world. Um, we've, it's always been about inspiring people to be active and, and healthy. Um, so a, a few months ago, nine months ago, we heard that the New Forest Marathon went bust. Um, it ran for 31 years, it raised 1.25 million for charity, um, and then went bust, because it, it wasn't financially sound. So we saw that as an opportunity. We know the New Forest has got a massive problem with obesity and in inactivity, so people not being active. We know that we've got the, the, the most number of active people in the UK, but also the most number of inactive people. Um, so we thought we needed to do something about it. In, in a nutshell, um, we started with a pound. Um, we left our jobs, and we now have a £140,000 project within nine months. It's a huge project, um, which you guys are going to obviously find out a lot about. Um, but today we're going to we're going to talk through our, our kind of our story of, of the last nine months. Um, to do that, we had to make some pretty tough decisions at at the kind of right time to make sure this all happened. So we're going to our main kind of reading today is to talk about how we came up with our product, um, the costs involved in that product, um, and then how we finance those kind of products. So I'm going to ask you a question at the end, which is, which will be, what do you think the most important skill is that we had throughout that last um, kind of, uh, kind of one period of time? Uh, last week we met two businessmen. One turned over 12, uh, 12.5 million a year. Um, the other one turned, oh, is, a, is a 15th richest, richest man in the UK. Uh, he's a multi-billionaire, um, and they both showed uh, phenomenal amounts of this skill, um, which which every single businessman needs to do. If you guys are going to be self-employed, um, then you'll all at some point or another share this journey that we just had. So, um, so before we carry on, um, I'm going to just going to show you a video of what it was that we created. Did, did any of you guys come from Brockham House? Nobody lives in the in the village. Does um. Did any of you go to the New Forest Marathon this year? No, I don't think anybody okay. Do you want to hear about it before, before we come into that? How did you hear about it? Well, so I live around the New Forest, so it's a well known sort of business. Yeah. Where about you live? Uh, Hive. Okay, cool. Okay, right, so we'll put, put this on. Put it on. So we're going to show you a video, guys. Just want to, just to give you a bit of a help with this, just try and have a look at the, some of the costs involved. We're going to be looking at look at the uh, the finance needed, but yeah, have a look at the videos anyway.
was the, the New Forest Marathon. It's a little bit different, isn't it, than a normal race? More like a kind of festival. Um, so before we started, we put ourselves back kind of eight, nine months ago. Um, me and Chris realised there was an opportunity. We bought the rights and we started with a pound. So what is our biggest business decision back then? But we sat down and we went, right, we're going we're gonna to go self-employed. We're going to leave our jobs that we, that we had before and we're going we're gonna to now make this. Our, kind of, our business to give the community back this event that it, that it kind of lacked. Okay, so what people didn't realise is that the event raises money for the community. So it raises money to go back into the community to fund projects that inspire activity over the next 12 months. Okay, so what's our biggest business decision with the marathon? Same as, same as any product has to go through, no matter what it is. If you were buying some guys, what do you have to consider? Does that have to be a business? It's the, it's the very first thing. It's the price. Huh? The price? No, before that. If you can afford it. Before that, before, afford what? Oh, you can afford it. What are you going to buy? So what's, the, what's the biggest decision? Risk. No. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? That's Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so. I need to get them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 How many, how many people can access a marathon? This is what it was before, it was a marathon and a half marathon. How, how many people, what do you think your market is for a marathon or a half marathon? So how many in here run a, run a half marathon? Okay. One. So, so our business in this room is one person, so <coughs> probably not going to be very successful. <coughs> You've only got one customer. So what do we need to do to the business? To make sure that every person, and people in this room, person in this room, can do it. Yeah. So what do we do? We've got the magazines, guys. You can see in front of me. Yeah, we can see that. What, what, what are we promoting? So what we did is we took a marathon and we thought exactly the same as Chris has just done in this room. Like actually, if we keep the product the same, we can sell it in this room to one person. If we change that product, we make it more accessible. It's just the same. Why is Facebook so so good? So 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 popular? Okay, because it's so accessible. You guys can you guys can literally from your pocket, one click, you're accessing the product. Okay, so every single person in this room can access it. Okay, same as anything else you buy, even if it's not a very good product, if you make it easy for people to access, then your sales are going to go up. Because okay, you'll end up buying what's, e what's the easiest thing to buy. That's why Amazon is so successful. Um, yeah, so the bigger, the bigger the market, the easier it is to, to, have a, to have a business in that market. Obviously there's more competition, but there's more, more customers. Um, if you make something too small and too niche, then you haven't got enough business or enough customers to make it viable. So we then, so we'll start from this end. How many people in this room we said could do a marathon? One. Okay, <laughs> full marathon. Okay, one person. How many people can do yeah. half a marathon? I've done it. That's 13 no. miles. Yeah, can do it, yeah. I'll give it a go. Okay, so <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe two. <laughs> How many people? So what? What else could we do? Then what else event can we can we put in here? Yeah, good. A ten k. How many people in here might have a go at a ten k? So ten k. Ten k. How long would you run for a ten k? Fifteen. An hour. About an hour. How many people in this room can run for an hour? Yeah. So now all of a sudden we got about third of the people. I was going to do five k. What about five k? 5k, everyone can do a 5k. Yeah. 20 minutes running. 25 minutes. 25 minutes. Junior. Charlie. I'll go to Junior. So now we know that. <laughs> now we know that most people in this room can now access our product. Okay, but that wasn't. We still could do better than that. Um, if we look at our... I've done it. Oh, you've got our demographics? Oh, oh no. Our, um, our age is... I said we do a 1K sprint. 1K 
<laughs> These are the, this is the age group of people that took part in our event this year. Now, obviously, we didn't know this. Our oldest runner was 92 years old. Okay. Our youngest runner was five years old. But you, can you expect a five year old to do 5k? Yeah. No. So, we had a junior race. Okay, and we had a walk. Okay, so now we've got a product that all of these guys can access. Now, interestingly, the walk was all ages for different people. Um, it kind of spread through. If you look at our demographics here, we've got as many people that are kind of 20 to 30 years old as we do 40 to kind of 50 years old. Um, and that's a spike here as well. So our product can now be accessed from the age of five to the age of 92, and um, if you look at the other one, uh, there. Um, in terms of it being attractive, 52% of the people that took part were female, 48% were male, 19% um, were already club runners, and 81% were people that had never done it before. Okay? So that's why that's how we knew that the, the product would be successful, because it was, it was open. I mean, so, We've now widened our audience. Um, if you widen our audience, it means that you can widen your income streams as well, as well so that every, the more people you have involved, obviously, the more money you're going to get bring in, and the more cash flow you've got. So that's our product. Um, next year, we're going to be looking at expanding <coughs> even more um, and having an ultra run, which is a marathon plus 10K altogether, so, so for the, the kind of other extreme. Um, so the other thing we have to do with our product is what? Advertise it. Yeah. Advertise it and brand it in a way that would be attractive to everybody and tell people that it was more than just a marathon like it was before. Um, so as you can see, all of our <coughs> branding, t-shirts, hoodies, the medals, the magazine, it's all branded in a kind of so relatively it. modern style. Yes, yeah, so just to give you an idea, guys, this used to be based in New Milton. It used to be based at a school. It was run out of a school with separate car parks and everything all over the town. Um, and we brought it to Brockenhurst, to New Park Farm. Yeah, so we've given it a central venue, a new look, new fresh website, fresh look of t shirts, medals, etc. etc. So that's obviously what helps you sell the product. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, um, I'm going to play you another video. Um, during, yeah. Are the different colours, like, do you wear, like, a different colour for the distance that you run? Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk, so if you're doing the 5k, you'd be purple. Um, the 10k was blue. The, five, the half marathon was yellow. The full marathon was red. So you follow your own footprint. So we call it the, the consumer journey. So any time you, when you guys run your own businesses, anybody that comes in contact with your business has a journey, has a consumer journey. From the moment they look at your branding, from the moment they take part in your event to after sales. So our consumer journey was led by footprints. So on our on our um, on our logos, um, grab a logo. Um, you look at our logo here. You'll see that we've got four trees. Four trees symbolise the four different major events, the full, the half, the ten, the five. They're of different sizes, representing different ages, um, different abilities. Also represents a forest, and the forest is also footprints um, as trees. And then that's repeated here with the footprint. So our generic colour was green. So anything general was, was green. So that applied to everybody there. And then as we kind of as we went through, um, See, we have different colour footprints here. So red is the full, yellow you know, half, and, and so forth. Um, as we went down, so all you did was follow your footprint. So if you were doing the full, you'd end up being red. And as you went around the course, you'd follow the red footprints around the course, and kind of stuff as well. So anything, and your baggage label was red, and everything else. So, so all followed. So, so what we're going to do is going to play you another video. When you're doing this, I want you all guys to at least write down five things um, that you would have to buy to put this event on. Okay, so we said we started off with a pound, 
the whole project cost about £140,000, but what did we have to buy? So as I, as I, as I play this video to you, um, I'm just going to write down, it might give you an example of it. In the, Okay, so if I stop it there, already just in that clip, what have we got? Stage. Okay, good. Stage. Microphone. Microphones. Okay, fencing. Okay, so four things already just in one thing. So Toilets. Yeah. <laughs> Toilets all across the back. Okay, so you're going to write down Those the Those last minute things. nerves. Many things as you can see, um, and then we'll see where we get to. For 2015. So the, the ones that are maybe doing the 5k for the first time, 
on 10k the first time. We, we've looked at the whole the whole thing the whole weekend. We'll take the feedback, we'll take the criticisms, and try and remodel it and try and make it bigger and better for next year. <coughs> so that gives you an idea. So, quick fire then. What are the costs involved? Start at the back there. What would you need to buy? Any costs? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Spanners. Spanners. Spanners and stuff. Yeah. Right. Anything else? Oh, geez, just stay. We'll just, we'll just go around. We'll yeah, I was running in the thing. So? Signs. Signs. Here you go, Brad. Come on, quick, quick, come on. Yeah, are you with us? Yeah, Charlie, Okay, next one. Charlie, is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. Charlie, is it? Toilet. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'll get that up on the board. We need, we have, yeah, okay, this is a page up. Okay, so these are some of our stats here. Um, two stages, 50 toilets, 5,000 t-shirts, 612 marshal bibs, 44 mate trained professionals, 10 marquees, celebrity starters, 100 camping pitches, 6,000 foil blankets, uh, 32,000 cups, 19,382 litres of water, 4 bridges, 750 crown barriers, 1,064 cones, support cyclists, <laughs> medals, band, goes <coughs> So, to start to think of some of the cost, guys, of, of what all that costs are. Uh, uh, just no, uh, each one. Yeah, to go round, so maybe some barriers. So, steel barriers, 750 steel barriers. How much does steel barriers cost? Mm -hmm. Oh, Pennies, cups, something like that. Okay, we spent one thousand pounds on that kind of stuff. Then you we had to have to hire out new park farm, so if anybody knows new park farm, loads of car parking space, big area. How much does that cost to hire for 10 days? <coughs> 10 days. 10 days. Plus, yeah. hang on, but we that is our venue just that. And we're running we're running six different events. They start and finish there. Fifty-three miles of forest and forest tracks. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> we had to shut the roads. Okay, so we're talking about six thousand pounds for to, to hire the venues, the road closures, that kind of stuff. Um, magazine next one guys, so to produce this, not only print it, but to put it together, that's why I was 200 pounds. <laughs> so, so we've got 5,000 of these printed, 36 pages. I swear that one piece of Obviously somebody's got to write that as well, take time, put it together, design it. That would be four pence each. <laughs> <laughs> but not, we're not just talking about we're not just talking about printing it. They got printed in Germany, got flown over from Germany. We had to pay someone to write it. Um, we had, you know, all the design costs. A few grand. Two. Um, okay, so so the bands. Okay, we actually we actually didn't pay anything for. Okay, the. The, the stages, so stages, PA systems, um, two grand. So we have lighting systems, That's PA four. systems, three four. Four. four thousand. Okay, water, nineteen pound. You think you've got five thousand runners? Each there's nine water stations, nine water stations, and all of them have one drink at each water station. That's so, okay, so we got around that by having 4,000 bottles on the finish line and water bowsers, which are big cubes of water. Um, and then we bought 32,000 cups. Um, we also then spoke to a company that supplied another event um, and they weren't going to be involved in it this year because they're moving up north. And we said, look, while you're st still here, have you got any resources left? And they had 6,000 cups and 100 uh, five litre bottles of water that they didn't know what to do with. So, so we did a quick sponsorship deal with them and managed to get an extra six thousand cups for them. So that's so that was uh, so water. <coughs> Four thousand pounds. So just to supply the water. Um, numbers. Chip is, these numbers got chip, electronic chips on the back. So you can track the runners, and when they start through the start line, it goes off, and when they finish, it, it goes off. But that's just not it. So you've got to pay. When you pay, they book on all the booking processes. They get one of these. They get safety pins. They get their numbers. That all comes down. They get the magazine. Then somebody coordinates all the results, um, all that kind of stuff. So how much does that cost? Say ten. Four. Grand. Salary we'll talk about later on. Um, bins and waste and clean up operation. Okay. 72 hours it took to clean up a forest. There were 15,000 gel packets. Um, 
The reason we use cups rather than bottles um, was because if you drop a bottle on a road, it becomes a tripping hazard. Okay, if you have a cup on a road, it just it collapses. Um, so, uh, so, but the waste operation, the cleanup operation is massive. Um, hundreds of bins, bin liners, uh, hundreds of people cleaning up. So, how much does that cost? Yeah. Probably about a thousand pounds because we did a lot of it ourselves. Um, we started to see a picture, guys, of how much goes into a business or into an event, sets up wise and cost wise. Well. I'll just give you some prices down here two thousand pounds, four thousand pounds for toilets, medical. Okay, so you've got five thousand runners. If something happens to those runners and you don't have that, what happens to our business? Suits. Yeah, exactly. So medical covers, we had two, oh, sorry, we had four ambulances, off-road vehicles, people on bikes, two doctors, helicopter landing pads, uh, we say um, 44 trained professional medics around the course. Um, how much? 10k. Not far off that. 8,000 pounds. Staffing costs. Okay, so we had 150 <coughs> marshals around the course that we paid because they had to be traffic trained because they were shutting roads and stuff. Um, we had various staff that we had to pay on the day to do various different things. Um, so we had 600 volunteers, um, but our staffing costs for that day about £10,000 for one day. Insurance. 5K. Um, medals. Now, if you've looked at those medals, <laughs> how much are those medals? <laughs> how many? Nah, these are so, uh, pound each. We're talking there on ten k. Okay, we had to we had to fly those fly those in. Um, sorry, sorry, we had to ship those in, which brings our costs down a lot. Um, but the, if you think how much it costs to get those individually designed, made, cut, and the rib ribbons put on, boxed up, and then shipped across from abroad to keep our costs down, um, that's yeah, that's a uh, ten thousand pounds. Signage. So all the banners, the flags, all the way around the course, you need to know where you were going. To. Okay. About ten thousand pounds. Okay. Uh, bridges, scaffolding bridges. 1k. 2k. 3k. Um, our sound. Okay, 4k. Um, banners. Oh, banners comes into the signs. I'll show you those included that. Uh, marquees. Power. Okay, we actually, uh, power came into the sound. Yes. T-shirts. 5,000 T-shirts, guys. How much, how much do you think that T-shirt costs? How much did you pay for that? If you were, if you were to go into a shop and buy that, what would you expect to pay? 15 Okay, so let's just take your starting answer 15 pounds. Let's just get that down a bit to a tenner, because it's, you know, or, or 11 pounds, which we say. Um, times that by 5,000. You're looking at fifty-five thousand pounds. Okay. We we managed to get our t-shirts for about twenty-eight thousand. Twenty-eight thousand pounds. We actually got that down a little bit more because we bought those in from from uh, China. How many t-shirts do you have? Um, five thousand t-shirts. Um, barriers. Yeah, barriers. <laughs> so looking at all those costs guys, you can see there's a big, big cost there, um, and they're not all the costs that we have. So like Andy said at the beginning, we had about £140,000 project, okay? So thinking of that, how do, how do we finance that? We said we started with a pound. Uh, they start to go through the maybe the revenue streams or the, the ways of financing that. So does somebody say sponsorship? Sponsorship. Yeah. So sponsorship. 
we'll talk a more about that in a minute. Anything else? Fundraising. Else? Fundraising. Um, that's more of a charity thing. Dad, mum. Dad. Dad. Yeah, thank you, mum and dad, yeah. Not when you're What are you saying? So what were we selling, guys? What were we selling with it? Daddy's pocket. No, we use it in my case. So you bought t-shirts. Okay. So like, bye. Can they pay then? Yeah. Entry fees, guys. Entry fees, yeah. How much did it went for? Depends on the event. Anywhere from sort of fifteen pounds up to forty-five. Where else can we get our money from? Bear in mind, you got to put in your, our situation, we had one pound. Alone. Go to the bank. What money? <laughs> <laughs> I've got one quick. What's the difference between a loan and a grant? A grant you don't have to pay back, so then you have to pay back. Okay. If you don't, we want, to, we want to avoid those if we can, because every time you take a loan out, what's it cost interest. you? Interest. Especially yeah. interest. Yeah. Okay. So as a business, you've got to make more money to just, just to pay the loan. So, if you did not take a loan, then obviously it's a lot easier to make a better business. Okay, so what else did we have there? Yeah. What else did you see in those, those video clips? What was in between, like, yeah, like, yeah good. Okay, so we had traders there. And bearing in mind, we've not talked about costs of websites or branding the websites, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, we did some online and some offline trading. Which is what we're about. Any other any other ways we can get money in? Donation and a sponsor. Donation is good, giving it like nothing can return. Good. Sponsorship. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you just have to put the brand names on it, like yeah. a or something. We have a we have a rule with our sponsorship that um, we only we'll only take sponsors in if we can give them a, a reciprocal kind of amount back. Okay, so if somebody came and offered us five thousand pounds, we'd only accept it if we can give them five thousand pounds worth of stuff back. Okay, otherwise it doesn't work. Okay, and, and you might get them for one year, but the whole time you've got to think long term. Okay, you, you can see what, what we've done is this event stands out in the, in the way that it's kind of organised, but also the way that it functions. Um, and it's designed to last. Um, if we were doing this as a one year project, it just, it just wouldn't work. Um, but if you're doing it as a something that's going to grow over the next 15 years or something, it, it, it works. So we need to make sure that these sponsors don't just stay with us for one year, okay, they stay with us for the, for the whole journey. Yeah, so um, as, a, as a business, guys, our, our customers, and not only the people entering it, but also the sponsors as well, they're our customers, okay, they're our internal customers. So you've got to look after them just as much as we've got to look after the runners. So the first thing we have to do is find sponsors. Okay, so we're talking now about, you know what the product is, you know what the kind of, some of the costs involved, okay, now, now we're going to start looking at how we actually got that money. Okay, so the first thing you gotta do is, is go out, easiest source for me and Chris for our own pockets. Okay, so to start it off, first of all, nobody knows what it looks like. Okay, so your entire product is online. Okay, because when you're running a, an event like this, people have got something to look at. So our first port of call was to say, right, we have to, we have to show people what they're buying. We have to get it out there. Okay, so our first expenditure was our website. Um, obviously we had no money to build that, um, so we had to finance that ourselves, okay? or we had to finance part of that ourselves. So we built a skeleton website um, so that we could start selling our product. We used social media, which was nothing, we built that ourselves. So the entire thing was done from just me and Chris, from the design of it, to the, you know, to the, the branding, to the medical stuff, to the logistics, the whole lot. So we kept our cost, cost, cost down there. We, built, uh, we put in £500 each, and we got a skeleton website built with our logo, and then we, we got out there and, and we sold to kind of relatively easy people to sell it to, our kind of friends and family and 
people that we knew 100% wanted to take part, like some of the people that, that had took part in the event previously. Um, and, we, and we got enough sales to be able to build the proper website and, and kind of put money back into kind of uh, making it. And then once also, we had a, yeah, I was going to say also with the sponsorship side of things, we went, um, we approached companies that could help us out. So the PMP Creative, uh, who did our website, they partly sponsored it. So rather than pay full uh, retail value for, for a website, we got them to, to do it at trade price. So we brought our costs down. So it's trying to look, look creatively at who you work with and you know what benefits they can bring you okay, and what we can give them in return. So when, you, when we're going down through here, these are all of our sponsors you see, and, and partners. Now not every single one of those gave us money. Um, actually only three of them did. Um, so we managed to generate about £11,000 worth of sponsorship. We had a sponsorship target of £30,000 um, to be able to meet all our costs. We, we didn't hit that. Uh, if, you're, if you own a business, and say, say, say if each of you had £100 in your pockets um, as a business in your marketing budget, you've got to decide how you're going to spend that each year. Now, if I came up to you and said, look, oh, that's a really great idea, we've got an e-commerce marathon, how about you give us some money and we'll give you some exposure? first thing you're going to want to do is know what it looks like. Now, obviously, if it doesn't exist, you can't do that. So we had to paint a picture. Now, this on the wall here, this is our picture so companies can now see what the product actually looks like. They've got all the statistics, where people come from across the UK, the number of people involved, um, how much goes back into the community, the charities, all the different opportunities. They've got to be able to sell their company within it. But last year, we didn't have that. Okay, so, so we're, we're just talking about sponsorship. So within sponsorship, there's different types of sponsorship. Okay, so we said before that there wasn't, not just about a sponsor giving you money, and then they're, they're, they're happy to give you money, it just doesn't work like that. Um, behind the sponsorship kind of journey, you, you've got to go and find a sponsor, and build a kind of build an agreement with the sponsor, so that they're getting back what they're, it's got to be a good deal for them, otherwise you lose them. And then you've got to make sure you deliver on that. Okay, so you've got to service the sponsor to make sure that they are getting what they think they're going to be getting out of it. Um, because if, if they've, a way a sponsor will look at it is if somebody gave me £5,000, say if, um, I don't know, Brockenhouse College wanted to sponsor the marathon, they gave us £5,000, they'd want to get £5,000 worth of coverage out of that. So whether that's money in terms of to be in the magazine, to have a stand there, there on the day, to, to have their names on the t-shirts, they've got to feel that they've got £5,000 worth of coverage back. But inside that, sometimes, they expect you to do work for them as well. So I know big companies, uh, like bigger sports brands, may, may be paying twenty, thirty thousand pounds for stuff, but within that they'd expect they almost buy you to say, right, you're now going to be working for us to, to raise our profile within that. So sponsorship isn't always as simple as it, it, as it sounds. Obviously, but we've generated about eleven thousand pounds in sponsorship. Um, but going down our sponsorship partners, um, only three of them gave us money. So we're going down here, um, this, these guys here, um, or, or National Park Authority, they gave us a grant, we'll talk about that in a minute. Southern Events Company um, gave us a lot of the PAs and stages in return for coverage and stuff in the magazine. Um, Abacus gave us 50% off all the vehicle hire. Um, team Security supply, supplied staff for us on the day for nothing. Um, Droid Cam did all our filming and stuff to get their name on in the magazine on the website and um, sponsorship of all of the videos. So at the end of the videos they've got a little bit about them. Chaffergate Film was the same deal. Ron Scaffolding, again for coverage, gave us, gave us uh, discounts on products. So a lot of these guys haven't actually given us money. They've given us money off their product instead. So it brought all of those big costs that we had up there, it brought them down. Um, High Five helped us with 15,000 gel packs. Um, so the monetary value, value of that was obviously several thousand pounds, but rather than give us several thousand pounds, they gave us product instead. So um, Aftershocks, we did a deal with them where we sold and promoted their product for them, um, which were headphones, which are amazing. They sit on your cheeks, 
um, when you're running around, you can hear everything that's going on and your music. So they're, they're the only road legal headphones that you can get anywhere. anywhere. Um, and so we promoted those. Um, I, I don't know how many, 700 pairs? Or something like that. Uh, yeah, so we yeah, about 100 pairs, but basically we had, a pro, we had a revenue share with them, so we, we promoted their product and we got a percentage back. So it's another revenue stream, which we haven't got up there, but that's another way of uh, generating some money. So that's something we look to do next year, to do more of that, different products, and create another revenue stream. Yeah, um, BBC Solar, again, they, they got us on uh, the Union Fed, their radio show, so there's a lot of promotion for us. Um, run camp, these are these are uh, running kind of the running classes. So again we, we help them sell and promote their classes um, in return for a percentage of their revenue um, that they got. Um, and it kind of goes on and like that. It's new for us signs um, they gave us look all of the signage at cost price um, and, and it goes it goes on and on. So um, so when we're talking about sponsorship, isn't that if, if somebody gives you five hundred pounds, but then you pay your full price for it, you just end up giving that money back. But if you can get money off, it's just as good as getting money in because you don't have to spend it out. So it's sometimes sponsorship in these kind of deals is actually better than getting finances in. because um, then obviously the hidden cost with finances is you then got to do accounts um, and submit that account and then the VAT and all that kind of stuff. Um, which even if it doesn't physically cost you money, will cost you time. If it costs you time, then that does cost you money because it means that you're doing that rather than going out and selling other stuff. So, yeah, and, and the big thing with sponsorship guys there, working with all these big partners here, the um, you know you're showcasing their products and they're hoping to then get sales off the back of that. So if Ron come in and build a big big bridge for us and it looks good, and somebody happens to be in the park on that day and thinks, oh, I need a bridge. Obviously, they've got somewhere to go to, um, so that's that's really their benefits. So the better we can make that, the more people we can get through, the more chance we've got of the, uh, the sponsors seeing value in what they're doing. And the other thing you'll find is that um, the more of these you get on board, and so these keep going down, the more trust people have in your product. So if we had one or two, then people might, you know, if you had one big sponsor that gave us like thirty thousand pounds or something. And that's great, but it doesn't show a lot of trust. When you've got this number of people involved, everybody looks at it, certainly from a business point of view, and says, well, actually, you know, 30 or 40 other companies have believed in what you're doing and have trusted you with their name. And so if you do a bad job, they're going to be associated with your bad product. If you do a good job, they're going to be associated with your good product. Um, and so it's making sure that you build relationships with all of these companies so that they're out promoting your work as well. Okay, so next year now we've come back, we've had a deal with the Run Camp already, uh, we're meeting SES um, next week, New Forest Signs are back on board, so now they're all kind of coming in saying, right now what can we do for you next year? And that grows and grows and grows. Um, so, so that's from kind of sponsorship. Um, sponsorship side of things. Yeah, so we have 11, 11k one. Yeah. Eleven thousand pounds in actual money, and thousands of pounds of discounts and contract deals and, and so forth, so forth. So I suppose the lesson there, guys, if you're setting up a business and on the face of it you can't afford all of these things, which we definitely couldn't do with a pound, then it's working creatively with people and looking what you can give them and, and almost get those traits. So you can achieve things. You don't always need finance. Again, going back to the, the demographics, which is why it's really important to know your know your audience. Every single one of those people will want to be in front of seven thousand people, and so it's making sure you know when you're speaking to these people. You know, even as the you know, like the car hire people, we we had to hire all sorts of different vehicles to be able to get the kit out onto the courses and stuff. You get your quote, and then it's going back and saying, well, actually, look, we're going to put your name in front of. 7,000 people, so what can we get back from that? You know, can we work with them in a different way to get our, our bill down? And even if, you, if, even if you're shaving 10, 10 pounds, 15 pounds off your bill, if you do that with all of them, it all adds up. So it's just a case of, you know, 
not giving up and, uh, and keep, keep on kind of working through that. So, um, like I said, our, our first priority was to build our website, um, to create our product, and then we had to infill that. And as kind of momentum grew, then we kind of also did deals with these guys so that we could pay them when we had the right amount of kind of revenue that was in as well. So keeping that kind of, keeping the books kind of above water. Yeah, so once that website's built and you've got your product out there, then obviously the big thing is then marketing it, trying to get the sales. Obviously with the sales, we can put the money in and then we can, we can build the rest of it. You also had um, revenue from parking, didn't you? Yeah. People parking, you charge for parking. Yeah. 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 The thing with revenue streams, as as a business grows, you're trying to then add revenue streams each year. You know, what can you do differently? What can you add to the event? How is it kind of more appealing? But for me and Andy, we need to keep adding more revenue streams. That's hopefully going to bring that overall bill that we went through earlier down next year and more profit for the, for the company. So merchandise, uh, two ways of looking at merchandise. Um, the first is that it's a revenue kind of builder for you. So you know those t-shirts, you, you know that you buy you buy them in at this amount, you can sell them out at a higher amount. Now most of our t-shirts were people got a t-shirt, a magazine, and a medal as part of their fee. We're giving away fifteen pounds per person plus a bit more uh, for every single person that kind of came in. Um, but anything we had left over, we could we can then sell um, and try and get some money back. But you've also got to think just just looking at some of those photographs. Um, all of these, even though we've given them away as part of the package, all of these are now wearing our our brand. Okay, so rather than just me and Chris going out this year trying to sell our product. We've now got people in gyms, running on the streets, et cetera, et cetera, with our, with our tops on. So we've now got 10 to 4,000 runners that have all got our brand in their house somewhere. Okay? And that, then, obviously, if you've seen those photos, are seen on Facebook. One of our Facebook um, posts was seen by 80,000 people within an hour. So I phoned up a t-shirt supplier in Bangladesh and somebody in the office there said, oh, you've crossed marathon, I've seen that on Facebook. Yeah. So it's, it, it does work. Um, so it's a case of, like Chris said, like bringing in your money and then thinking, <coughs> can you expect, can you spend some of it to then generate more within that time frame? So, so how much in entry fees do you think we managed to get guys? I think four events. It's fifteen pounds to go to five k. It's forty five pounds to go to the marathon. How much do you reckon we, we generated in, in revenue or entry fees? Any guesses? You had about four hundred. Hundred k. Yeah. That's a good guess. Four hundred people in the marathon, was it? So there was full marathon. Full marathon is about yeah, four hundred. Yeah. There was two thousand and a half marathon. It was about 1,810 k and 500 in the 5k. So 100k was pretty, pretty good guess. So it was actually 112. So, good So loan wise, going down to our loans, um, parking and camping is what we, so basically you book the venue, we said it costs about £6,000 to book our venue, and the other thing you do then is you go through your whole product and you guys are that's exactly the same, how can we maximise revenue from what we've got? Well we booked a facility that was massive and could hold 30,000 cars, um, we knew we wouldn't get that many cars in in the first year so we decided to change one of the fields into a camping area. Um, we made the camping really cheap so that it kind of it, it filled it up. Um, but this year, coming up, because now we've had 7,000 people see there's a campsite there, this year we, we're going to obviously be able to make that much bigger. Um, uh, car parking was exactly the same, is that it's a way of just trying to push up your, 
your income to try and cover the costs of that venue. And we didn't make money on the car parking in terms of we didn't make any profit on it, um, but it did help us cover some of the costs, like the cost of building the bridges around the course um, and making sure that we had top medical cover. So it, it just allowed us to produce a better product, which again, in time, will pay back because people will trust us, you know what I mean? So, um, but we looked at other models like Bournemouth Marathon, they were charging four pound per car to park, and then they charged every single athlete eight pounds to get back on a bus from the finish line to the start, uh, to the finish line back to the start. Now ours started and finished in the same area, so there was none of those costs at all. So, so for the, in comparison to them, you know, when their their total cost was twelve pounds, ours was three. So ours starts looking really, really good in terms of like that. Yeah, so moving forward, obviously we're hoping to attract more people from Bournemouth over to our marathon because ours is um, obviously a lot cheaper. Um, so that's one way we can, we can generate revenue next year. Um, okay, loans then. Um, we didn't take loans off anyone. We said loans are kind of, if you can run a business without taking loans, so sometimes you can't avoid it, but... Um, we were quite clever with our model in terms of the way we did stuff, in terms of we, we put in £500 each. Um, so that was a kind of loan, you call that a director's loan, so you loan it to yourself. Um, so we just kind of put in £500 each, that gave us enough to get the website going or part of the website going. And then once the website was going, they could then generate sales, which then funded the rest of it. Um, so that was a very small loan, but and that didn't cost us anything. If you're going to go to a bank and take out loans, then you've got to remember that it's good because you get the money there and then, but you've got to then pay that back with interest. So you should be really careful on loans. I think what it proves, guys, is you don't have to take a loan to, to make a successful business. So if you're sat there as a business student thinking, I'm going to set up a business, you don't need to go to the bank necessarily to achieve it. Obviously, many businesses do, and, and they're, they're successful as well. But Lots of different ways of doing doing this. So. The other thing we used a lot was social media. Um, so we knew that we could sit there and, like, for example, me, me and Chris could go out and do our other work, like Chris could do his coaching and I can go and do, do teaching and all the stuff like that. Um, and that will generate money. But at that point in time, even though we weren't taking the salaries, it was better for us to spend the time on this because if we if we managed to get say 20 people on it in a day by promoting it via Facebook or social media or being at another event, for that it was worth a lot more than the money that we'd earn by going out ourselves and doing stuff. So it's, it's about kind of making those decisions, even though you're not going to get money now in terms of making the event viable, it's, it's about yeah, sensible decisions. So. <coughs> and going down, we've got the, the, trade, the traders at the event, so we brought in food and drink retailers, we brought in technical traders, so they're all paying to be there for the day, so they can then trade to the, the 7,000 people going through the door. So we charge them a fee, and that, that gives us another revenue stream, which again you can grow in the, in the second year. More traders hear about it, they've had a good day, they've made some money, and then we can, we can then uh, sell more pictures next year. And that's it. Yeah, yeah, we haven't talked about grants. Um, so we we managed to get one grant, and that was from the National Park Authority, and they gave us a grant to help us um, put on extra coaches to try and get people to the venue, um, and help us to buy, uh, build a bike rack to encourage people to ride there rather than using their cars. So um, again, that didn't generate us any money, um, but it did allow more people to get to the event. Um, so by putting shuttle buses on from Lindhurst and Brockenhurst, you know, people could get there on the train um, and people could ride there and have a safe place. So it opened the door and made our event more, more accessible, which is what we're saying at the start. So yeah, so lo lots of government bodies have, have an interest in actually making businesses like ourselves um, become successful. Because there's, so many, there's so many benefits for, for the surrounding area, other businesses as well. So if we're successful, the business in Brockenhurst would be successful all for maybe giving us a grant to get more people in and, uh, and make things happen. Because uh, without that grant, we probably wouldn't have had a bus to be able to put on and get people into into Brockenhurst. So, so a little bit of help goes a long way. So that so now you've seen our kind of the global kind of picture um, that the cycle 
but making sure that first first of all you've got a, a good product. So a good product. Um, we then looked at the areas of expenditure, so what we have to buy, so costs, and then we've looked at sources of income, and it all should kind of wrap up like that. Now for us, with those sources of income, um, our priority in year one is, is to do what? Take a profit. Yep, yep. What, why do you need to make, make a profit? So you can do it again? Yeah, we have to be sustainable. Um, our biggest our biggest kind of priority is making sure that me and Chris can spend time to make it even better next year. Now financially, um, we've not taken a penny out of the business from e from Easter till, till now. Uh, and even now we're, we're only taking a small amount um, out just to, just to help us pay, pay bills and stuff. Um, because our, our kind of, even though that's important, um, unless we invest back in the product, then the product's not going to be good enough next year. So when we say about growing businesses, it's, it's about you've got to have faith in your own product, and you've got to, you know, you've got to invest in your own product. If we if we stood by and went, well, that's it now, that's how it looks, then we're not going to keep selling. It's like it's the same as everything, you know. Look, go back to Facebook. Facebook changes every every couple of weeks, doesn't it? They're forever evolving it to kind of make it better and more accessible and more user friendly, and try and engage more people all the time. And, that's exactly what we're doing now. So we're going back. We're, we're working with all the different partners, the Forestry Commission, um, the local councils, um, all the local governments, all the people we've got sponsors from, um, all the community groups, and we're learning lessons of how we can improve it for next year. And we've got a whole massive list of stuff of how we can change and evolve it. So, yeah, so you may be looking at that and thinking, well, why don't you reward yourself early on? So the reason is if we took all our money out now, we then have no products and no reinvestment. So of course the whole thing would fall flat. So if you if you do it gradually and then reward yourself later into year two or three, then you've got a, a proper business. So it's just, just something to make sure you're looking at the long term goals rather than the short term gains. Okay, because we could look at that and think, okay, there's a lot of money there, we can take money out and have a good time, but then we wouldn't have a business in year two or three. So doesn't make sense. Um, so when we when we started, we had these were our aims. Um, so we wanted to revitalise the marathon, give it, make it a bit more special for for everybody to take part in, inspire as many people to take part in physical activity as possible, um, and build a platform to raise money and awareness of local good causes. So what we've not talked about is underneath this whole business. Is a charity, so we've we set up a New Forest Marathon Community Fund. So the event raises money for that fund, and that fund then gives money back to all of the. There was about 15 community groups that helped us out this year. So manning the water stations and helping with health and safety and logistics and running around doing all sorts of stuff behind the scenes. You just can't run the event without them. But these are groups like pubs, brownies, sea scouts, those kind of things, and. We've been out and visited them all, and they do amazing things in the community to, to help people be active and, and help kind of the kind of generation coming up. And they run on nothing, so we it's only right that we give back to those groups. So we've made about five or six thousand pounds this year that we've given back into those groups. So we're now using that money to fund projects in those groups so that they can be active, and and it, and it will obviously help the, improve the health of the area. So, um, so that's the kind of reason behind it. And we, you know, we've been out this week and we've seen brownie groups and dried groups, and and, and, they, and they survive on nothing. There's one, one uh, army, army cadet group, and they're they're training soldiers, and they've got nothing. So if we can give a little bit of what we've got back to that group um, to help make a difference out there, then then it really really helps as well. So, so that's that's behind that. Um, and then, um, and then the, the our key thing was to operate with transparency and high moral standards and clear communication. Um, when you're doing a, an event like ours, it involves and affects the whole community. Like we know that Rock and Earth Village got cut off because of the road closures. Um, lots of the organisations across the forest we have to rely on for, the, for their help. And unless you conduct yourself professionally, 
then you're not going to get the support of those groups going forward. It'd be very easy to come in, plug in an event, cause a, cause a wave of disruption and disappear again. Um, but you'd only exist for a year. Whereas if you want to grow a business, if you do it properly, um, then people will trust you and kind of move forward. But what I'm trying to say is don't cut corners. Because um, if you do, it just comes up and bites you. So, um, Oh, so, so, um, any questions, questions, guys? Any questions on what we've done or what we're trying to talk to you about? Yeah. You're going to have to do like twice only instead of once. Is that a thing? Isn't it? Yeah, we're trying to obviously. That's our that's our major event of the year uh, as an events company. Just behind this, we're not just the marathon, and we're going to work on other events and other revenue streams. So obviously that whole model can be put into another event, you know, whether it's a bike event or a sailing event or whatever it is. So yeah, good question. That's the way we're going to grow our business. Any other questions? Do you have any questions? I think every single time you make a decision, I said this to the other group, if, even if you don't end up being self-employed, if you work for somebody else, um, and it's the same with the departments in, the, in this college as well. Every single decision they make will have a financial impact. So it doesn't matter whether it's buying, you know, <coughs> buying um, pens to, thank you, to, um, to, to, to buying posters to whatever. Every single minute you spend in your business, you're, you're consuming money. So whether that's money in terms of actual real money or whether it's time that you could be you know, spending money. So you just the entire time, you know, whatever decision that you make, you come back down to finances, which is not really how the world should run. You, know, you shouldn't. That's not really kind of what should be happening in the world. But it, the, the kind of truth is that behind absolutely everything, it will have an effect, a financial effect. So, um, so uh, yeah, you just kind of even if you don't end up doing your own business, just uh, just bear that in mind, and you know, you're kind of teams, but.